The Royal Australian Air Force's effort to push the EA-18G Growler beyond legacy airborne electronic attack capabilities is not incremental polishing. It is a deliberate shift toward a digitally native, networked, suppression of enemy air defenses posture that aims to keep Australia operationally relevant in contested electromagnetic environments well into the 2030s. The program commonly described as Growler Block 2 bundles sensor and jammer modernization, cockpit and data architecture upgrades, and force generation changes, training, emitters, logistics, so that Growler can act as both a hard jamming platform and an enabling node for allied strike packages. The formal procurement activity mapped into AR 5349 Phase 6 captures this intent and establishes the acquisition pathway for replacing aging ALQ99 capabilities with more agile software defined systems. At the hardware core of Block 2 is the insertion of next generation jammer capabilities and the evolution of receiver arrays and signal processors to handle the width, density, and agility of modern radar networks. NGJ Midband, ANALQ249, reaching initial operational capability in the U.S. fleet, reduced a major integration risk. It validates the underlying electronics, power, and cooling designs, and creates a maturity lane for allied adapters. For Australia, having NGJ class effects available from an allied supply chain shortens the technical path to fielding multiband, cognitive jamming that is necessary when facing passive, low probability of intercept radars and software-defined emitters. The operational logic behind Block 2 is straightforward. Modern surface-to-air and integrated air defense systems are increasingly distributed, multispectral, and orchestrated by data links. To defeat them, you need not only higher raw jamming power, but faster signal discrimination, precise geolocation of emitters, the ability to shape spectral effects in near real time, and the interoperability to sequence jamming with kinetic shooters. Block 2 therefore pairs NGJ-type transmitters with upgraded receivers, advanced direction finding, and a digital cockpit data bus architecture that exposes sensor feeds to allied command nodes and to optionally automated decision aids. This combination converts Growler from a point jamming source into a force multiplying sensor shaper for mixed formations that include F-35s, Super Hornets, and uncrewed teammates. Beyond avionics and jammers, a crucial but less visible element is the training and threat emulation environment. Realistic operational advantage requires that crews train against representative, high fidelity emitters and that maintenance and logistics pipelines can sustain new, high-power radio frequency gear. Air 5349 explicitly addresses training system upgrades and mobile threat emitters so that RAF crews can practice against complex, distributed scenarios rather than simplified emitters. That investment is as material to operational readiness as the hardware itself because integration problems and tactics, illiteracy, commonly surface during complex coalition exercises rather than in lab tests. The tactical payoff is twofold. First, Growler Block 2 expands the range and selectivity of electronic attack so that it can open corridors through layered air defenses and provide time-sensitive suppression for standoff strike assets. Second, by exposing its sensor and effect data to a shared digital fabric, Growler becomes an information dominance node that helps deconflict and prioritize targets across air and maritime participants. Practically, that means better coordination for JASM class standoff strikes, more effective salvo management for allied anti-ship missile launches, and reduced fratricide risk when multiple platforms operate in the same electromagnetic battle space. Yet the program is not without programmatic and operational risk. Integration of multiband jammers onto a legacy airframe requires careful management of electromagnetic compatibility, thermal loading, and power distribution. Certification cycles are long, and any delay in the NGJ or receiver timelines produces capability gaps where Growler retains legacy limitations. Supply chain and sustainment issues also matter. Software-defined jammers shift risk from hardware procurement to long-term software support and cyber resilience. 
If software updates lag, or if testing against adversary-like emitters is insufficient, the theoretical advantage may fail to translate into tactical effect. These are real hazards that planners must budget time and funds to mitigate through parallel testing, allied interoperability trials, and robust contractor-government sustainment agreements. Strategically, Growler Block 2 strengthens Australia's contribution to coalition deterrence in ways that are not always visible on the deck plate. Electronic attack platforms do not score headlines in the same way as a new frigate or submarine, but they shape the operational environment by eroding adversary confidence in their sensing and targeting. For Canberra, that is valuable leverage. By investing in effects that complicate an adversary's command, control, and fires networks, Australia increases the cost of aggression without necessarily escalating kinetic footprints. In the AUKUS framework, a capable growler fleet also becomes an interoperable enabler for combined mission sets that range from maritime denial to expeditionary strike. In short, Growler Block 2 is a capability modernization with immediate tactical relevance and strategic leverage. It ties advanced jamming hardware, modern receiver and data architectures, and upgraded training ecosystems into a package designed to operate in the most contested electromagnetic environments likely to emerge in the Indo-Pacific. The payoff is airspace that is more permissive for allied strike operations and more hostile to adversary sensing. The cost is a complex, software-dependent program with schedule and integration pitfalls that require sustained political and budgetary attention. For policymakers and practitioners alike, the question now is not whether Growler needs modernization, but whether the tempo, procurement discipline, and coalition testing regime are sufficient to deliver the promise of Block 2 on time and at scale.